guys doing? Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, and this is my YouTube channel. So, I'm about to film for another video. Figured I'll go for a walk and see what we can find. Come on, guys. Let's see what's out here. Already, here's some things to uh, look under. A centipede. see some poison ivy around here, but uh, I don't get poison ivy because I'm lucky. But with my, uh, with my other health problems, it's kind of nice to catch a break. Here's a good way to identify poison ivy. The bark often looks furry, or the vine, the older it gets. It gets this furry look, almost like Chewbacca. And there are the leaves. People do say leaves of three, let it be. But there's plenty of things that grow with three leaves. And there are some things, sometimes poison ivy doesn't have three leaves. Like look, there's two. You, know, you can't count on that. And right beside it, there's a good example of Virginia creeper. See how this Virginia creeper vine has those little feet that come out of it? Right there. And it has five leaves, usually. And the vine is not furry like this one. So Virginia creeper and poison ivy on the same tree right beside each other. Now here's perhaps a better example of the poison ivy vine that I was telling you about. How it gets rather furry as it gets older. There's no mistake in it at that point. And check out the size of those poison ivy leaves. Now let me tell you, I'm lucky I don't get poison ivy. There are several plants you can use to help neutralize it in case you do get those oils on you. Jewelweed being the most popular one, of course. Anyhow, poison ivy. It's a very valuable plant, actually. A lot of birds will feed on the berries throughout the winter. It's a very valuable food source for them. So for people who are like, what's the point of poison ivy? You know, why should it even be on this planet? It does provide nourishment for plenty of creatures. It just bothers us. But then, you know, we can eat grapes and things. Dogs can't, you know? Dogs might be sitting there being like, well, what's the point in grapes? You know, some things can do things that other things can't. So everything has its place. Everything has its value. So, uh, there are some large centipedes here. And they make me a little nervous because they can bite. And it is a venomous bite, but it feels just like a sting, apparently. You know, bee sting. But uh, I'm going to try to hold one and talk about them. Of course, they are predators. So there you go. There's a little centipede. Centipedes are uh, very carnivorous all the way. Millipedes, however, they're herbivores, meaning they feed on vegetation and fungi and things like that, as far as I know. But centipedes, they feed on other invertebrates. So if you look at the front there, you can see those two pincer-like appendages. Those are actually modified front legs. They're like two giant claws attached to venom glands. So they pierce their prey with them and inject a venom that I believe paralyzes it. I'm not sure, but it definitely kills it. And then they begin to consume their prey. They can pinch us with those. and it, As I said, it feels like a bee sting. So I've read. But they're not really that aggressive. And they can also use those back legs to grasp onto things. I've seen them grab their prey with all their legs, just wrap around them and bite into it. It's kind of a scary thing to see. Really fast creatures. Millipedes have at least twice as many legs. They have about two pairs of legs per segment, whereas centipedes only have one pair of legs per segment, as you can tell. I'm pretty sure that those rear legs also kind of throw off predators sometimes, make it look like that's the head end. 
maybe it confuses them, buys them an extra second or two to escape. Let's see if I can film this in the light here. They also like spiders. They like to feed on spiders. There it goes.